Let's go from Wessex Blades. We got knives. We got fair rods. Got cutting wood. Burning leaves. Come and join me. six blades and we've actually managed to get out first dry day in about three months so here we are um, I suppose two miles from home uh, set up the tarp just to get the sun off our eyes and I'm hoping to get as much mileage as I can with the Main Street Boosie from Funky K-Bar USMC Marine fighting knife from Fenland Lady Ralph Bear Mini Parang Cold Steel Rifleman's Hawk, Chris Kane folder, and a bit of a play with my triple setup. There we go, a triple threat. So let's go find something to do. Oh, it's good to get out. Okay, and in terms of chopping, I'm only going to be bothering chopping with the parang and roll bear. Cold steel. The other ones are lighter duty, so let's let's put the ones that are supposed to do chopping together. We've got a little lock down here. Loads and loads of deadfalls. Good. I am sharpness. This is literally as it's arrived. You know, so I'm chopping. I'm not chopping in front of me. If I miss, my knee's here, but the actual stroke is a foot to my right. Very accurate. Very consistent. That's great. Easy to use. Now, hey, Ralph, see how your made of scraps knife fares up. Obviously it hasn't got the weight of the uh, cold steel, so it should be in camera there. about that then. Should be visible. It's a little beast. Just move the leg off the tree a minute. Right. That there. Should be able to see that quite happily. I'll choke up so it's a bit closer. Powerhouse. Very good. And so you don't have to hold it all the way down the handle. You can go to there and you've got as more almost as much weight on the handle the other side. It's 
Super Bear Cat. Hardly marked it at all. Alright, so that was semi gone, that wood, but it proved how good a chopper this mini prang is. This is very hard. So I'm going to keep this out of the way on the other side of this log. This the faller. Yeah, this is like quarter staff material. This is. Blade with a bit more weight to it, and off it goes. Very effective little tool. <laughs> it's a shiner, to be honest. Right, back to the cold steel. So, a change of material now. So, this is a little bit more seasoned as opposed to slightly gone. Just miss you again, Mitch. All right, there you go. And that's all you want to do the process wood, just get it done. Should be in shot here. I'm trying to throw my voice yeah, over there. The one anyway. Different length again, is it? Sorry. This is the Boosie from Funky Prepper. That's a bit of a hefty log I'm doing here. See how it goes. Got through a bit on. And there the classic. Not the shotgun. Keyboard, you're a SMC fighting though. Keeping it long and long and low. Turn it round. Holding it is on the back half of the handle, stopping on the pommel, so it allows me that sort of motion. Absolutely no problem. Hitting from halfway to three quarters, I suppose. Right there. Cut long and low, allow it to cut along the grain, give it an easy time because it's only a sort of Stick tang blade. Oh, it's a bit gone, but it's doing okay. Look at that. Let's open it up. Look 
classic. My face. Is he damaged or is he? he no, he's he's going for a high spot. So he's climbing up to go for a takeoff. Yeah. Yeah. So he's finding his way up, getting to the sun, warm up a bit, and then he'll be away. He's been in the ground. For me. No, no, no. It's not exactly flight of the bumblebee at the moment, is it? It's like the right. we just retired over here a minute. All that bush chopping over there is not everything to do with bushcraft. There's also the need to be able to do detail work. Um, so I've cut down one small bit of green. So we're talking 40 mil thick at one end, with a Y at the other. So as if we're going to make the odd sort of pot hanger, temp peg, that sort of task. Okay, um, we'll start with the harangue from Ralph Bear, and all we're doing is just seeing how how it slices like that. A okay, chest lever grip. Me likey. Me likey. Just there. It's really good. Up close. Oh, detail work. When I saw this knife, I, I, I think my comment was hold the phone, scraps. Yeah, okay, Ralph. Scraps. You find a piece of good steel and you beat the hell out of it and turned it into a beast. So, scraping. Just a bit of debarking. Very good. Notching. Hear that? Good, 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 good. Here we go. And that rocking cut because you, you're you're sort of going towards your hand, but you got the wood in the way. Sharp, accurate. Take as little as much as you want. It's very good. I'll go to the the K bar, which is as far as middling as as any knife I've ever known. It, it's right in the middle of just about everything. People use it for self defence, combat, bushcraft, admiring. So, just a gentle a wake up. Right, chest lever grip. Okay, I'm only using the bottom third. No problems. Now, I'm not using a gloved hand. How is the guard without a piece of lever in the way? Not obtrusive so far. And that's 
straight blade allows you to go right up. Whereas with the parang, once you go right there, because it's got that recurve, it ends up choking ever so slightly as it gets to the belly. So that's why I prefer doing a chest lever grip from halfway along-ish to the end rather than right up there because you've got that recurve just fighting back against you a little bit. Now, let's use the sweep of the blade. Again, some fine detail work. Very good. Okay, bark shaves should be good. That's steel from all New York in it, or lean New York. And for a few minutes, I've used it without a glove. I'm not finding the guard obtrusive at the moment. And it's a little bit light at the front because you've got the pommel at the back, so sometimes that happens because it's not weight forward like that being a stick tang with hardly any weight in the handle it's weight forward so that isn't gonna stop and allow the handle to move on the blade carries straight through like in the cable sheath that up a minute along the parang. Let's go to the mean street now. It's a bit of a chunky bevel on that one. So a wake up. Again, very heavy in the handle. doesn't roll much in hand because the profile of the handle is very oval as opposed to the K-bar which is trying to catch that it is oval but it's got flatter sides here it's much flatter on the side of the scales took so my um is it for notching? Did you wear that then? So, there it is. Put a notch just there. fair amount of effort but it is quite a chunky bevel but it's doing it I like slicing like that especially on that straight section there it's happier doing a push slice cut rather than a yeah it likes it likes going in like that with a slight amount of forward motion. That's good for the old Chris Kane to go. So this is a non-locking UK legal folder. For those who are not aware, they're about £50 new. I paid 20 because it was second hand. It's got a couple of scratches on it, but it's still pretty sharp. Now when you use this, that is still doing that. So the grip that you use here has to be mindful of the fact that that's going on. So you keep your hand up there, steady in the back bar section there, the other end of the blade. So very lean grind, and that's. That's left an incredibly clean cut there. But then it is a very light blade compared to these fixed ones. And that is cut in clean off the top of the wood like that.
Yeah, he's a slicer at this thing. When you consider the stocks under that thick and there's almost a full flat grind on it, it should do. Right, notching. I try a chest leader grip. Now my hand, I'm putting my fingers around the back end of that to try and stop it going. Okay. How's it there? Change my grip to sort of semi over grip like that. Hmm. That is. does allow some very accurate whittling like that but power still there look yeah I think I've got a bargain there Mr. Roach 20 pound Very capable. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's fold it up. That's the key bar. Just a comparison. Key bar always does the job. great hold there it's slightly round in there but you can always steer it because the, the knife wants to settle like that all the time because of the weight forward and lower center of gravity at that end it's ever so low down here it wants to do that so you don't it doesn't really roll in the hand I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll use that for ferro rod and I'll round that choil off there because I'm using that so often that's actually quite 90 degrees there I'll round that off and that should be a lot more comfortable all great bit of a daylight firing of my triple threat so there's three ferro rods there mounted in a hardwood handle with a brass lanyard troop now you know, I find there's more to ferro rods than just the mix or the expense of what these are it's, it's it's a lot to do with what you're using now that is a murderously sharp spine on this parang I'm scraping across the top two rods there. So to camera. Even in daylight, even in sunlight, hitting two of these things, double barrel man, get on with it. So into the into the sun over here. Okay. Let's drop that light down a little. That moved that then. 
Let's just set fire to a leaf. <laughs> That's been raining for four months. Holy crap. Is that in shot? I don't know. Smoke in the ground. This thing is evil. Have you? Yeah. Oh well. Bumblebee's just taken off everywhere. Alright. Where's my hand? I don't know, I can't see. So bright. Damn it. Just set fire the leaves. That's amazing. In this wind too. Tinder, that's leaves. Triple threat in the house. Thanks for joining me again. A real quick excursion outside. Got Mitch filming with his cool cameras. And uh, let's get back before he closed the road, don't it, Mitch? We've got road works or something. So, you join me again. It's got Mitch. Mitch explains in English. Trap looking face. <laughs> <laughs>